Yeah, if they put the money into one-time projects like capital construction or highways, that would be one thing. Most of this money is going into ongoing programs. And Transfer programs, service programs, things like services, that. Services, yeah. And I think that what will happen in 2010 is there will be tremendous pressure to raise taxes and fees to issue more debt. Uh, in fact, that's already happening. What Governor Ritter ha wants to do is raise taxes. He wants to get rid of the homestead exemption. He's already talking about increased fees. And frankly, that's, that's going to really, you'll really see that pressure in 2010. And they're going to gut the Tabor Amendment because eventually the Tabor Amendment says government has to grow at the rate of inflation and population growth. So, but they're going to need a lot more than 6% a year to make up for this one-time one -time infusion that could go away. Is that exactly. what you're telling me? I think I understand. And John, uh, you mentioned uh, United Airlines. I think maybe the better analogy is General Motors. Uh, in the state of Michigan, of course, where the government employees have the defined contribution plan, uh, General Motors is, doesn't, and they're going insolvent. They have a very, uh, let's say, an older labor force or a lot of retirees around the Detroit area. And uh, I heard that characterized in December when they were asking for the General Motors uh, bailout or the Detroit bailout that, um, you know, the car manufacturers are no longer making cars. They're running retirement plans. And they're running retirement plans off the labor that is not making money. Well, we kind of have the same problem here. That retired government employees uh, are getting paid for by current employees, and there won't be any money left for those current employees. I well, that and it's an aging population. It's uh, you know the baby boomers are are growing that population. More people are retiring. It's it's a common problem around the country. But what did GM do? They went to the federal government and said, "We need more money." because of all of these liabilities. They haven't really taken care of those yet. And even President Bush said, well, you know, this will be at least a more graceful process to bankruptcy. So instead of, those instead, of, instead of doing the hard, tough love thing, which is to say, it's not government's job to bail you out of your bad contractual arrangements with the union. You are a business, you have to deal with it. Now we're going to make it suffer longer and longer and longer. We're going to make this patient suffer more before he has well, to fix himself. Well, and paid for by the taxpayers right. at hundreds of billions of dollars. Yeah. Give me an idea. Bring this in, in layman's terms here. Just how big of a problem is this? Out of all the problems facing Colorado government, you know, put, put this on a scale somewhere for me. Is, it, is this, well, could, uh, could if, if the if we don't raise taxes, and taxes you'll need to vote on, and I'm going I'm to say taxpayers are going to be asked, wait a second, you need to raise my taxes so you can give somebody else retirement money? No, no, no. I need that money in tough economic times for my family. I'm not, am I going to get new roads out of this? No. Am I going to get new services out of this? No. I'm going to do this because you could not plan properly for somebody's retirement? That's going to be a hard, hard sell. And, and let me tell you, I'm going to make it a hard sell. But... Um, what, what happens if, the, if, if that money, if they don't raise taxes? Well, to give you a number, uh, the, the staff that, that provided Kent and his committee with uh, the information needed to assess the situation in, in Para, they estimated that just this year, to begin to address the problem, uh, just this year, uh, the state would have to come up with over $100 million of additional money over and above what they're already putting in there for para to begin to address the problem. Well, Kent can tell you this, this is not the year where they're going to find $100 million in that budget to solve para's problem. So, Because they're already uh, looking at a $600 million shortfall from their numbers. And fiscal year 9 and 10, next fiscal year, and we're going to be starting on the budget uh, for, the, for that, is probably going to be worse. We don't know what the year is going to be after that because what happens to our national economy? I, I am very pessimistic that we're going to be out of this yeah, recession. That's just because you're a Republican. Uh, you Republicans well, <laughs> are always depressed. Yeah. Well, I think we're going to all be depressed here for a couple <laughs> of years. So, but uh, you know, I, I if you ever seen that any Steven Spielberg movie, you you get the picture of what's going on in the foreground, but then there's this big black cloud running in across the plains and you know something is going to happen. Well, right now we're focusing on, like you said, $600 million out of our, out of our current budget. Uh, that's, that's drastic. Para has lost $13 billion this year alone. So that's that big black cloud that's, that nobody's really paying attention to 
the viewer may see it, but that's not this, what we're, it's not an and issue I, right I now. Haven't, I haven't done the, the back of the envelope con, uh, calculation here, but you're saying $27 billion shortfall. We've got 4.4 million people here. You do the math. I mean, we're talking about tens of thousands of dollar liability for per every taxpayer, man, woman, and child. Is my calculation wrong on this? No, it's, I think that's in the ballpark. I think, uh, and this, as I say, is ubiquitous. Uh, Standard & Poor's has estimated unfunded liabilities in state and local government pension plans and health care plans across the country. And this is a gorilla in the backyard of every state and local government in the United States. Their estimate is we're now, we're now looking at something close to $2 trillion in unfunded liabilities. So, you know, people are not paying attention to, to the magnitude of this problem and what the long run burden this means. Essentially, it's an inter, intergenerational transfer of wealth. It means that we're paying out a lot of benefits to this generation. Our future generations are going to have to come up with the tax dollars necessary to pay for these benefits. We got a charge card. We're getting all the goods. Our kids are going to pay the bill. Is that the right way to well, put it? Well, and all these para administrators and legislators are going to be gone when those le when those people have to pay the taxes to, to come up with those benefits. So, so all the kids will be able to say, "Thanks, Dad. Thanks, Grandpa. <laughs> you did a, did us good." All right. I only got a couple minutes left. Try not to be a Republican for a second. <laughs> try to try That's to tough. impress me. Make me an optimist. What what do we do here? I mean, if 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 this is happening, there's no doubt that this is happening. We're we're massively in debt. This is going to come to an explosion here. You guys are in office. I know Para. We invited them to be here. They refused to be here. You guys are there. What do you guys want to do? Well, what's, what's I'll, be the, I'll be the non-Republican. I want to I want to support uh, all of our workers. So I'm just going to ignore the problem. I mean, that's what we've done for a number of years. Uh, I'm not going to be the one to stand up and raise up my hand and say, well, we're going to change your benefits and lose all your votes out there. I, I, I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to let it go on until, as, as Barry says, we're going to have the train wreck. And the train so, wreck comes and either there's going to be massive tax increases or massive right. uh, benefit cuts. But I, I think that train wreck is getting closer and closer. The black cloud is getting closer and closer. And How we, close? When, you think it's 2010 is when it is? Well, I, I think it's, you know, from the roller coaster we have right now, I think we're in it. I think it's very, very close. We've lost $13 billion this last year, largely due to the national economy, but I just don't see that improving anytime real soon. We have to have a deliberate plan to get out of this. Let me get away from Mr. Sunshine for a yep. minute here. And bring it over here. Now you give me I'm some the black cloud. Yeah, you, you, you get me out of this black cloud. This this is massive, and it, it it could bankrupt it could bankrupt the state and certainly a lot of good workers. And there are a lot of good workers who have depended on this retirement might not get it. Give me some hope here. Well, here's the irony. I, I'm an economist, and I'm actually optimistic in the sense that we have a precedent for solving this problem in other states, in other local governments, and certainly in the private sector. Uh, and what should happen is that Kent and his colleagues should declare an actual emergency. They should require that PARA begin to seriously look at reforms, including replacing defined benefits with defined contributions, and actually lay out a plan to solve the problem and show that they can meet statutory requirements, they can meet government accounting standards, and pay off this unfunded liabilities in 30 years. We know it can be done. Other states like Michigan have done it, and there's no reason why Colorado shouldn't begin to do it as well. Appreciate it so much, Barry. Kent, thank you. And thank you. Check us out on the web, independenceinstitute.org. Listen for me late nights on 850 KOA. And by all means, tell a friend. We'll see you next week. You don't know where to turn it off.